And so, yeah. Um, oh, God. Yeah, that's it, man. That's it. That's, that's you know. Now, um, you know, flashing forward to, you know, to, to, to now, um, tell us how you got into, um, into uh, the, the barber profession. Break that down for us. <clears throat> oh, man. Wow. Um, crazy because uh, I actually have been, I always, when people ask me questions like this, I always break it down to like, you know. Stages. Like, yeah, really, because if we really want to go back to when I really, really started, uh, man, I was 14 and uh, my father, man, used to take us to a, a, a terrible barber <laughs> where we were from. <laughs> and I got a lot of bad haircuts, man. And, and I just got tired of it, man. You know, when I got to that age, you know, when you get to that age and you kind of start, you know, paying attention to your haircuts mm -hmm. and, you know, you want it to be crispy, man. I was just tired of getting bad haircuts. So I told my dad, I was like, <laughs> look, man, I'm not going back to this barber. You know, I can cut. I, I made a joke saying I can cut my hair better than, you know, she can cut my hair. Oh, and I've been going to it for years, man. So, you know, again, I just got tired of it. And so my dad kind of called me out on my bluff. Um, he bought me a pair of clippers uh, and trimmers, which I actually still have to this day. Um, Was it the Andes brand or man, a different brand? A pair of Andes Masters <laughs> and the Andes P Outliners, the, the most classic clippers that you can use. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Everybody pair of them somewhere in the bathroom. So, um, you know, ever since then, I started cutting my own hair. You know, uh, obviously, I wasn't, you know, just crispy out the gate or not. I, I gave myself a lot of bad haircuts slowly started improving then I started cutting my father and then my brother and then just kind of just you know just I never really took it really serious you know um up until you know uh when I moved here uh I used to cut people's hair for free you know um just you know basic haircuts I started with that low haircut um wow and then I turned uh man I was in my mid-20s I think 2000 and 10 is when I actually went to barber school, man. I uh I got fired from a job. And uh, you know what? I just like, man, in between that time, I worked so many dead end jobs. I just, you know, work jobs. Like a lot you know, of us. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? Just like no real, no real outlook, you know, of what I really wanted to do, man. But it was just something I can always did, you know, never really took it serious until that point. And I kind of just hit a wall and didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, I had a couple friends uh, and my mother uh, that recommended barber school. And I, again, up to that point, I never, I never thought about it. I'm like, barber school, like, how much, how can I, how much money can I really make, uh -huh. you know, cutting hair, you know, because back then, man, cuts was 10, 15, $20 was the most expensive cut, you know, at the time, like, man, yeah. I didn't even want to pay 20 myself. So like I said, I, I was really doubtful, but then I just... I didn't have anything else going on, so I said, why not? So in 2010 is when I really started taking it serious, man. And um, uh, wow, like I said, that would be, wow, 38 now. So, man, about 24 years I've been cutting, man. And I've really wow. been taking it serious for about the last 10. So Now, Joe, just to kind of let the viewers know, you know, the, the type of work it takes into just even applying for a barber license, in Michigan, it takes what, like eighteen hundred hours or something like that. It's eighteen hundred now, but when I was in school, it was two thousand. They just dropped that within <laughs> the past few years. Yeah, yeah. So two thousand hours, man. And uh, you know, when I again when I started school, um, I didn't even really take it serious until I got to school and see what it took. Like you know, in my head, I'm going, I'm just gonna cut hair for two thousand hours, and that's it. Well, <laughs> I got there. They gave us a whole stack of books, you know, before we even touched the clip or touched any head, man, we was in the classroom for six months, you know, learning mm -hmm. about anatomy, learning about the history of barbering, you know, sanitation and things that I never imagined, man. But I'm, I'm really yeah. grateful for Michigan Barber School because without that, I definitely wouldn't be where I'm at today. And, and I just learned so much, you know, not it has nothing to do with cutting hair. You know, it's about mm -hmm. the other side of it. But you got to have that. It needs, you know, to to go together to, to I feel like, to truly be successful in, in a barbering career. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And I'm, I'm glad, you know, you provided some details because um, 
Uh, I got a, a, a virtual event uh, coming up with um, some uh, high school youth that are kind of on the fence about staying in school. And I wanted you know, to, them to know that there's different paths to quote unquote, make it. It can be a traditional uh, four-year college degree route, or it can be through a trade where you're getting a license or certification and, and, and you're still making money. Um, you really piqued my interest because you took it to another level. Now, tell us about the story with Clipper Vision Barber Company, LLC. Oh, man. Wow. Uh, first and foremost, man, it was, it's a true blessing from God, man. Um, just in general, man, I'm always trying to improve, always trying to, you know, do better, finding ways to better myself, uh, within my profession, just the board. But, uh, so I was on quarantine and I just randomly got a phone call, man, from a guy I actually used to rent a house from, you know, years ago. Um, Man, and you know, quarantine, I was just in a crazy state of mind, didn't really know what I was going to do next, everybody. didn't really know what, when I was going to be back to work, you know, because everybody was, you know, we were just, I was at the house down, man, and um, I got that phone call, he said he had an opportunity for a building for me, Um, I thought it was crazy, but I said, hey, why not, you know, um, went and looked at the building, Um all the details, you know, I felt like worked out for me and it was just such a sweet deal. I had to take it, man. And, um, mm -hmm. it was just a true blessing, man. Like when I say it fell in my lap, it absolutely fell in my lap. And so, um, I just took that opportunity and, uh, just put my foot to put the, my foot in the gas, man. And, you know, here we are, man, you know, we've been on once now and, uh, it's going well, man. A true blessing. I really truly feel blessed. Now, um, you know, I don't know if you ever, you know, had like a business course, but, you know, I always yeah. peep how yeah. you, you're, you're real business savvy because I'm looking at like some of the things that you got going on. I've seen uh, uh, a tattoo, uh, tattoo clippers and tattoo theme. I see how you give a shout out to your neighbors out there. Uh, if they're doing a giveaway, you find creative ways to kind of, you know, um, pull in your, your consumer base? Where did you pick that up from naturally or you've been doing your research? A little bit of both, man. Um, well, I mean, I, I've never taken any business course or nothing a day of my life. I mean, you know, you let, let me tell it, you know, I swear I got the, <laughs> I feel like I'm the most business orientated person, but it's, it, that's not the case, man. But just nonetheless, I did do a small amount of research and then just naturally, man, I just try to show love, man. And I think that, you know, uh, with just me wanting to to just do well and, and be better, I think it all just kind of goes hand in hand, man. I mean, mm -hmm. I've always, you know, I've always hustled something, man. You know what I mean? Like, I just feel like that comes with the territory, you know? So um, it's just something I feel like, I guess I just naturally possess, man, you know? I, I mean, that's the only way I can put it. I don't even have like a deep answer for you. I just that's just it, man. I'm always just trying to be better. And whatever it takes to do that, I'm going to do it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, I peeped the, the, the themes of, you know, hard hard work, um, applying yourself uh, from a sports analogy, you know. Um, you know, I, I, I tell some of the young viewers, I get a lot of ball players uh, mm -hmm. on this show, you know, and I tell them, you know, when that chance comes, as far as like scholarship opportunities, you know, when you get out there, don't don't be scared. Don't be scared to you know take the shot or or, or be aggressive. Now, uh, based on that same premise, how would you how would like what would you tell a young man or a young woman that's thinking about going into business for themselves rather than you know just continuing to work the regular nine to five? Man, I mean that's just do it. Like literally, not to be cliche, but literally just do it, man. There's no is is no wrong in it at all. Like it's wrong if you don't make an opportunity, you know, or take that chance. Because okay. listen, man, there's gonna be even if it's not the job you currently at, there's always jobs that's gonna be there. But the opportunity to go into business for yourself and work for yourself might not be. So if you get that opportunity, just do it. Don't think about, you know what could, what should, all the woulda, coulda, shoulda, man, that's doubt. And 
it's natural to think that way. But at the same time, listen, if I could just put my own personal, you know, journey in the steps I took through that. Like when I said, man, when I, when I got that call on quarantine, I was just in a spot where I didn't know. I didn't like opening a business right after quarantine, especially like this. I didn't know what was going to be. I didn't know how it was going to be. I was very doubtful. I was skeptical. I wasn't sure if my clients were going to come back to me, but I really sat down and I just thought about it. And I said, listen, the only, you know, bad thing that would come from this is me not taking this opportunity. So you got to take it. Don't think about what could have, should have, and just do it. Just do it. Mm -hmm. You know, because you can only go up. If you fail, you just go back to the drawing board and there's no harm in failing. You know, that's, that's, that it builds character. It really does, you know, and it makes you better for the next opportunity. So just go for it. Just go for it. And you don't want to have that thought like what if. Exactly, because you might not, you might not get another chance. So you gotta, you just gotta do it. Who cares about failing and all that? It don't matter. It don't matter. You fail if you don't even attempt. That's the fail. Now, what what does a typical day in the life of of, of a master barber look like? What's what's the typical day from from a, a nine to five perspective? Oh man, um, I'm pretty sure your day doesn't start at nine. It probably starts at like six a.m. Uh, some certain days I wouldn't even say that early, but you know, I typically do work from about eight or nine o'clock to about six o'clock. Um, you know, me personally, man, I like more of a uh, calculated day because uh, I do have a family. I have you know three children, lady at home, I got to take care of, and you know, a whole household. So you know, my day I like it to be calculated, man. So. I'll go in, you know, take care of my little opening shop business and, you know, do a little cleaning, whatever, just prep the shop to be open and, uh, you know, just service my clients. And then um, that's it, man. That's pretty much it, bro. Just I don't want to make it seem like it's just cutting hair. That's mm-hmm. one aspect of it. But, you know, just a, on the barber side of it, that's it, man. Just try to provide the best service I possibly can. That's mm-hmm. it. That's now- it. How's the like like the culture looking like as far as in the barber shop? I always assume you know like if it was like the barber shops I used to go to way back when I had hair, uh, but uh, it always used to be like a lot of debates on sports. It was like ESPN first take before first take. What's That's like what some I mean. of the common debates in the barber shop? Oh man, well you know me being from Ohio and and everything that's going on right now, you know, I'm a LeBron guy. So that, that, <laughs> you know, the LeBron topic is really heavy. Um, you know, all the sports stuff, man, all, every sports topic you can think about, you know, music, obviously we always hear who's your top five and who's better. And, you know, every uh-huh. kind of musical and sports comparison, you know, we talk about everything, man, life, love, you know, uh, we all, everybody that, that works at the barbershop and, and frequents there for the most part is almost like family, man, because, you know, the guys that, you know, I've been knowing each other for years and, you know, we know each other's families and, and you know, we've been each part of each other's lives for a very long time. So, you know, it's, it's, it's literally like a family setting, you know, so just a lot of, you know, it's, it's almost like a brotherhood, a real family type you know, settling. So just imagine like being at a big cookout or a family reunion. Is that, is okay. that, type, you know, cause that's just, I, that's the type of person I am. And I try to be really personable, you know, I'm cool, calm, laid back. And I just try to take that same vibe to the barbershop while keeping it, you know, at, at a family level, but you know, keep Still it the barbershop, professional you know? side as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. We keep it. the. I just call it it's barbershop talk, it's shop talk. Mm-hmm. So, you know, if you've, like you said, if you've ever been in a barbershop, you know the vibe, you know, <laughs> you know the vibe. So that's how we Now, do let me put you on the spot for, for, for uh, a minute. I always got to put each guest on the spot or in the hot seat before yeah. the interview uh, ends. Now, yeah. um, who would be like your, your, your dream uh, customer? Who would you love to have uh, in, in, in the chair to kind of, bounce off ideas or, or, or hear some stories from oh man golly I, man there's so many people man you know it's, i mean since i just brought it up man probably lebron one because i'm asking why he okay. still got it 
Then what are we doing, man? I'm trying to cut that off. You know, <laughs> I'm taking them to the ball head immediately. <laughs> but no, it's a, it's a lot of guys, man. You know, I, I got a lot of guys I personally, you know, uh, I feel like I'm tied to, man, just because I feel like I grew up with them, you know, and, or, or, you know, really enjoy, you know, what they do. But there's a lot of LeBron, man. I would love to sit and cut, man. Master P, uh, mm-hmm. man, God, so many guys, bro. So many guys. I could just, that's just a couple to name a few, man. You know, oh, guys. Man. Like that. So. I'm going to put a little plug out there. So uh, this summer, one of my guests was uh, Tiana uh, Bartoletta. She's uh, an Olympic gold medalist in, in, in track and field, and she's from Elyria, Ohio. So really, I'm gonna really? tell her to uh, wow. come through if she's ever in Michigan again. Please Stop do. The wow. wow, please do. <laughs> please do. That's dope. Please do. Wow. Now, um, if you were having like a, a, a movie on your life story, the, the, the Joseph Stinson, Stinson story, the Joseph mm-hmm. Stinson story, which actor will play you and why? Which actor will play me? God, that's a great question, man. Um, I gotta think, man. Who done been through some similar things? Uh, I don't know, man. Uh, God, that's I've never thought about nothing like that. Who would play me? And it could be, it, it could be like you know, um, it can be even an international uh, actor. I remember I had uh, battle rapper Goods on the show. He said he would be um, a king because we were talking about Mansa Musa. He was like an African king. He was like a rich yeah. world. Yeah, I'm so. familiar. Yeah. Um, man, just off the top, man, if I had to pick somebody, man, uh, God, I'd probably say somebody like maybe like Anthony Anderson, man, because you know, okay. um, the reason I say him is because uh, just from the outside looking in, man, you know, a couple things that, you know, I feel like, you know, I could kind of relate to is the fact that, you know, he's a like naturally silly guy, you know, comedic, you know, and all that, but he also has like a serious, serious side, side. Yeah, serious side, you know, serious. so I feel like I'm, I'm, that's how it's me, man. I feel like I'm 60% silly as hell at all times and 40% is my serious side. Um, he also, you know, was a heavier guy at once, lost a little bit of weight. And, you know, I, I relate to him with that as well. So I think, yeah, Anthony Anderson would be my pick, man. I think he's excellent. excellent. Now, um, you know, so you so you you pretty much, you know, uh, you know, went through with like a, a weight loss plan or like what did you do to the to, to like to to change that up? Uh, well, actually, in in 2019, um, I actually had the uh, the gla- uh, gastric sleeve uh, procedure, and um, well, before that, uh, I was actually seeing a nutritionist um, since 2017. So uh, for like two years, man, I um, I uh, followed a strict you know, diet plan, you know, not perfect. So I had a lot of ups and downs during that time. My weight was something I always, always, always struggled with, you know, I'd be on one time and then all. And, uh, was dieting and exercising and I lost about a hundred pounds, 120 pounds on my own. And, um, you know, it was at that point, um, the, um, the dietitian and everything uh, that I was seeing recommended that I uh, that I ever consider weight loss surgery, and it was something that I never ever considered. But um, you know, with everything that she told me and the things that I had picked up, I feel like you know it was my best option. Um, you know, I had children. You know, literally, I just had a child born at the time, so it was just something that you know I felt like was necessary to to prolong my life. And just live a better quality life, you know. So I, I did it, and uh, since then, um, you know, I'm down a total of about uh, almost 200 pounds. So, um, oh, wow. yeah, yeah, bro. It's um, I feel so much better, and um, it was just something that was necessary, man. I had to be, it had to be done, man. Just health, health is something that me personally, I've never really, I guess, taken serious, you know. Um, 
you know, you go through things and, you know, you, it, it, it comes to your mind, but again, like, you know, it's a different focus, you know, and I, and I see that now, like it's a different focus to be healthy and, and maintain that lifestyle. Like you can talk about it and you can, you know, be in and out of it, but unless it's, you know, a, a state of mind and literally like a lifestyle, it won't work. And so that's, mm-hmm. that's what I work to. And that's where I'm at with it now. So. Okay. okay. Now, um, you know, the, the purpose of, the, of, the, of my podcast is to motivate and inspire young people, but you got me motivated and yeah. inspired too. You know, you're making it happen as far as chasing goals and careers and dreams with the barbershop. And, you know, you accomplish your weight loss goals as well. So, you know, that's motivating and inspiring adults as well as the young people, man. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, Thank you, my brother. Thank you. you. Blessings to, to you and the fam, man. And and let's both, you know, uh, keep up keep up the grind, man. So, salute to you. Salute the Clipper. Thank Vision. you, my brother. Thank um, you. You want to give a quick plug, a, a shout out, and uh, where you guys are located? Definitely, definitely. We are located in uh, Belleville, Michigan. Um on, on at the, sorry, the address is 9830 Haggerty Road. It is inside the Haggerty Center Plaza next to Mr. Pizza, um, next to Bell Nutrition. Um, yeah, we are uh, just uh, just south of uh, E-Course in 275 and just okay. north of 94 in Haggerty. Uh, really, 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 uh, really. Uh, um, <clears throat> oh, it's real me. accessible then. Yeah. yeah, very much, bro. It's not it's not far as it's local, man, to all of Wayne County because it's right off the highway. Mm-hmm. Um, man, we have three barbers to service you. Uh, we take appointments. We take walk-ins. We're open six days a week, you know, even Monday, 12 to 5. You know, Monday is a day that, that most barbershops are closed, but we are yeah. open on day. And we do take appointments on Sunday as well. So, okay. Um, yeah, man, to anybody in the area, if you're looking for a barber, man, uh, looking for a great service, great environment, come on down and see us, man. We also offer a couple of uh, products as well. Um, if I can like, plug my uh, my beard oil. Okay. Um, what, what about the body? Uh, what is it with the, the butter? Yeah, yeah, we do have the, I call it boss butter. Um, okay. This is a uh, natural uh, hair and skin moisturizer. Um, everything I do is natural, man. I excuse me, I have, um, I have a lot of skin issues myself. So I actually created this with, you know, myself in mind. And just in general, a lot of the products have, you know, petroleum, parabens and things in it that's not really good for your skin and your Mm -hmm. hair. So Mm -hmm. um, everything I have is all natural. Um, It's great for your skin and your hair, man. So just, just a couple things we offer on top of great service, you know, great barber, you know, great environment. So anybody that wants to come see us, please do. Please do. All my information is in my profile. Um, And you guys on with Instagram also? And Facebook under Clipper Vision Barber Company. Same on both. Okay. Say that one more time. Clipper Vision Barber Company. It's uh, the same on both on on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. Well, Joe, appreciate you, man. Um, if you don't mind, I'm going to share the episode on the podcast page on Facebook, Heavy Brand Podcast. For those that's viewing on my personal Facebook, just simply type in Heavy Brand Podcast, and you all can see all my recent and previous episodes. Thanks, Joe. My brother. Thank you, man. Much blessings to you, man. Thank you. So.